My name is Erica, and welcome to To The Beat, inspired by CZ's reverse choreography. We have connected four dancers and four music producers in a collaboration that takes a new spin in our usual ways of creating choreography. Today, we have Felice, who will be creating a choreography to no music, and Ira will then create a track to her moves. Let's get to know this season's artist. Mabuhay! I'm Felice Hobbes from De La Salle University, Manila, and I'm a current member of La Salle Dance Company, Folk. I have always loved dancing as a child. I remember joining various dance workshops, mostly related to hip-hop and street dancing, and was a part of dance groups back in grade school and high school. But it was only until I entered college where I could say that I have found my dance genre, which is Philippine folk dance. I have been receiving my formal training from our trainer, Mr. Peter Alcedo Jr. for four years now. I'm still a newbie in making choreographies, but when I do, I usually just freestyle, improvise, or combine steps from previous pieces I've already danced or dances that inspire me the most. Um, but when it, in terms of Philippine folk dances though, there are some steps that require a proper form. So even though I am freestyling, I still make sure that um, these steps are still appropriate or can be modified into a more contemporary version. Creating choreography without music felt a bit incomplete, mainly because for me, music is my blueprint in making choreographies as music sets the mood, um, what your facial expressions should be, how big your movements should be, those little rhythms, beats, it makes up for how you should move towards the piece or the whole choreography. So I think what mainly inspired me in further creating this choreography is the idea that I am representing the Filipino culture. So with my choreography, I made it to a point that I'm able to combine or incorporate a bit of steps from each of the subgenres in Philippine folk dance, which are the Cordillera dances, the Maria Clara or Spanish-inspired dances, rural dances, and the Muslim or Luma dances. To Iren, I already know that you're gonna be doing an amazing job in producing the music for this choreography. I hope that I was able to help you in some ways during our small discussions on how you could approach the process of making it. And I super can't wait to hear what you have in store for us. I'm so excited. So good luck, partner. We got this. Hi there internet, my name is Aaron and I'm also known as Falling Islands, that's my sort of musician name if you will. Um, welcome to my little home studio here, uh, this is where I uh, write music, compose music, produce music and also listen to music. Uh, did I mention that I like music? <laughs> yeah, so um, I am a member of NUS Electronic Music Lab and I am also an electronic music production instructor at Pop Studio Academy uh, in Singapore. So uh, basically today we are going to be taking a look at the track that I made um, to Felice's choreography that she did for To The Beat Season 3. And so uh, without further ado, let's hop on over to the computer and see what I did. 
Alright, hi everyone. I'm now here at my workstation here. I use Logic Pro as my main digital audio workstation. So what I did first when trying to compose music to Felisa's choreography was to import her video file of her performance into Logic. What you see here in the little thumbnail at the side uh, and at the top here is the video file that's put on the music timeline. So I can actually expand it out and actually the first thing I did uh, when I was composing for this choreography was to watch through the footage on its own first. All I did was clap along with the footage like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I eventually ascertained that 117 beats per minute was the tempo that police was dancing at through the very all-powerful theory of agaration or estimation. I did that. <laughs> the first step I take towards um, doing any kind of uh, scoring or writing music to picture is to make myself a guide track. So what a guide track is, is a very simple version of the entire track that you're going to make. This, I basically use this very simple sound uh, just to create a skeleton of the track. So we can pop over to the video of myself playing this guide track. So the first instrument I added and uh, it was the bass pizzicato strings. So I really like to start with the bass pizzicato as it really grounds my track. It really gives my track a very solid foundation to build everything else upon. Then on top of this bass pizzicato, I also added this sub sound. So this is actually a synthesizer sound that I made with Serum. So this is a very, very, very popular plugin that makes all sorts of uh, wonderful synthetic sounds. And I thought that this would go very well with the orchestral sound of the bass pizzicato, uh, sort of something to enhance and make it even more weighty than it is. So by layering these two together, I get a very weighty bass sound. So now I'll move on to the mid pizzicato uh, strings. So this is also a pizzicato plucked string sound, but I uh, wanted to make, give it a sort of more uh, mid-range to high range kind of melody, a sort of enchanted forest kind of vibe. So this is a slightly higher melody that follows along with the bass pizzicato parts that I've added. So next I'm going to go to this soft string spurs uh, instrument. So what this is, is essentially acting like a solo instrument that plays a very prominent lead line on top of the pizzicato lines that I've already put down. So it's a really really beautiful um, expressive sound and it goes very well with the layers uh, and so on top of that I decided to add on some harp sounds so um, to add a little bit of like blooming bloom, bloom kind of flavors around what what this does is I already have a pretty full kind of um, orchestral sound but then I also thought something was missing because of course I'm from Electronic Music Lab. I wanted to add a little bit of electronic elements to this track. So what I decided to do was to use um, an analog synthesizer, a real hardware analog synthesizer, to add an additional layer of instrumentation to sort of accompany the orchestral parts. So it's a real hybrid of electronic and orchestral. I put in this basically a kind of very a bit of a brassy stringy kind of sound. Alright, so even though this is a synthetic sound overall, um, I feel like it adds a lot of character to the overall piece, uh, the orchestral parts of the song, because um, it fills it really fills in the gaps of empty space in between all the orchestral sounds with uh, this very nice swelling textures. Alright, next we're going to go on to the flute. Okay, so I wanted to add in a little bit of like high end melodic interest in this track. Yeah, you can sort of imagine like a, 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 a panoramic movie shot of over like a valley as the sun rises, that kind of thing. <laughs> that was the vibe I was going for with the flute. Um, and of course, you probably heard already, I also added Celeste. So these are little uh, bell-like... 
These are little bell-like sounds that uh, also play and that I timed along with Felice's kicks. And as you can tell, there's a little bit of a jingling kind of sound with the Celeste, so even though this is an uh, acoustically recorded instrument, I added a little bit of electronic effects. Okay, so now moving on to the second to last instrument, I added this uh, Serum um, preset, so I use, I'm using Serum again. So what this is, is it adds a, it's a little bit of a atmospheric electronic uh, texture that I just uh, added on top because I thought it was a nice touch to um, add some high-end spark. Uh, on top of the flutes and celestes. So along with the flutes and celestes, they really add a lot of character to um, the high end of the track. Yep, so uh, this was actually a sound that I designed myself using Serum. I just you put, a, just put together a bunch of waveforms and just like tweak a bunch of settings and then it came out with this very beautiful kind of um, patch. Yeah. It sounds heavenly, doesn't it? <laughs> so now on to the very last song. Um, this is sort of um, uh, my sort of favorite sound to use. So this is uh, my own recreation of a very popular sound that used to be used in the 1980s. So it's a very popular synthesizer sound that kind of goes a bit like this. So I use this to add little sparkles all around the piece that sounded like this. Yeah, so this is just uh, some additional sparkles that go along with the beats. Alright, so that is basically it for the track. So I started with the guide track, then I essentially put in some very basic orchestral layers, then I added in some synthesizer layers and also some top end flutes and celeste and all this kind of instrumentation and the result is what you are about to hear. So yeah. Alright, hi Felice. Um, I really, really hope you enjoy the track that I prepared um, for your choreography. It was really a beautiful dance to work with and I'm really thankful to, for the opportunity um, to be able to work with you over the internet on this project. So, um, well, um, here we go. I really like the composition Ewing made. It was so warm, hopeful, and just exudes positivity or good vibes. And I feel like I challenged Ewing in making this composition because I didn't have a specific tempo as I was dancing. I was just casually counting in my head and freestyling the choreography that I did. but. He was able to make a consistent beat if you were able to listen to it a while ago. And as I mentioned earlier, I really like how the starting beat was lively, but not too lively, allowing it to continuously build up. So as I was doing a new figure or a new movement, he was also adding a new instrument to the mix or a new beat. And I really like that one. Also the violin or the hum, so it becomes louder as my movements are bigger and then softer if my movements are smaller. And although he was trying to match my movements, I it felt like he was also encouraging me in some way to dance bigger, exaggerate my movements. And it was really just good and yeah, amazing, amazing work. <laughs> At least from my experience, it's already difficult enough to match your choreography or the context of the dance with the existing 
music. So what more here wherein you're instructed to dance to no music at all. So it was really a learning experience. I was able to be more mindful of my body, my breathing, and my surroundings. And I think this activity just proves how art really is anywhere. It's just a matter of how you're gonna be interpreting your environment, the things around you. So I recommend this activity to all artists out there if you wish to challenge your creativity and you wish for new ideas to flow through you. Hi Ire! It was really such an honor for me to have worked with a great artist like you. Um, thank you so much for giving a new meaning to, to my choreography and I hope that this will not be the last of our many collaborations in the future. Just kidding, but you know, maybe. <laughs> I wish you well and good luck in your future endeavors. I'll always be here listening and supporting you, waiting for your new releases in your Spotify account. Everyone, please go follow him. Thank you so much again and stay safe. We hope you enjoyed this episode of To The Beat. If you like what you saw and heard today and want to follow our dancer or music producer, here are their socials. This episode wraps up this season of To The Beat. A big shout out to all our dancers and music producers who were involved in this season, including Adriel, Marco, Iram, Elena and Clint, Felice, Jackie, Isabel, and me. To the Beat was produced by NUS Center for the Arts as part of our ExxonMobil Campus Concert Series, or EMCC for short. If you enjoyed this series, remember to leave a comment, share with your friends, and stay tuned to EMCC's YouTube channel for more shows, performances, and collaborations. But for now, thank you for tuning in to this series. My name is Erica, and see you all again soon.